Hello guys, welcome to my channel and today I'll be going out to explore Santome. Santome is the second Portuguese colonized island I'm visiting after Cape Verde in northwestern Africa. Santome translates to St. Thomas in English. The Portuguese named most of the islands they colonized after Christian saints. If you like traveling, you might want to subscribe to our channel so that you'll be notified when we have something new. Don't also forget to share your thoughts on the comments after watching. I'm starting this trip from Accra, which happens to be the cheapest option to Santome from Lagos. There are several options of flying from Lome, but these are very new and recent. While we get ready for takeoff here in Accra, let me share a few things you need to know about this trip. There is an option of going to Santome from Calabar in Nigeria by a ship. This option also exists in Douala and Malabo. From Calabar, it costs around $150 for a two days trip in a ship. Note that there are no schedules nor departure dates. The ship leaves when it has enough passengers and goods for the voyage. Most Africans visiting Santome will need a visa, except if you have a valid US, Canada, UK or Schengen visa. Visa costs around $50 and can be obtained from their embassy. In Nigeria, Santome embassy is located in Abuja. From my experience, CST mobile phone network is a better internet provider in Santome. Motorbike is the cheapest way to move around and traveling with US dollar or Euro is a better way to move around with cash in Santome. Debit cards or credit cards might not work. I had a horrible experience of my cards not working when I arrived and I did not even travel with any cash. Fortunately, I was able to find my way around cash and I will share what I did at the end of this video. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere. Let me also stress that it's important to learn some basic Portuguese before you travel to Santome if you are a lonely traveler like myself. So having known this little about Santome, let's sit down and relax for this one hour 45 minutes flight from Accra to Santome. Welcome to Santome. Historically, Jews from Spain were the first people to be moved to the island to work on the Portuguese sugar plantations. Some African slaves from the ancient Congo Kingdom and the Angola, they are brought in here as well. There were a history of several revolts from this place, but fortunately, Santome became independent of Portuguese rule in 1975. One thing you quickly notice in Santome are the very old colonial structures, some of which are abandoned without any trace of life in them. The city is very lively with so many young people, most of which are students. And one might observe these students can stay out as long as they work in the evening. I somehow decided to find out why this happens. Here in Santome, the Portuguese educational system is followed. The basic education consists of nine years of schooling, divided into three sequential cycles of four, two, and three years of studies. And the school age starts at six. Unfortunately, however, the school system here in Santome, unlike the one in Portugal, is marred by the shortage of classrooms, insufficiently trained and underpaid teachers, inadequate textbooks, and so on. This insufficiency of classrooms is the reason the school authorities had to divide school times into three different timings in each school day. Students in different stages of the educational system attend classes at different times, from even finish lectures at almost 8 o'clock in the evening. This explains why so many of them stay out that late on their school uniform. This secondary school here is one of the biggest in the country. I was told that the number of people schooling in this school is almost the same as the number of people living in the Principe Island. Some classes here have up to 70 students and I learned some university and pre-university lectures happen in this school as well. Now, I noticed something with the dressings of some of the students here that is not very common elsewhere in Central or Western Africa. The girls are allowed to dress elegantly with artificial hairs and makeups. I also noticed a boy with tied hair and earrings. I was told the freedom to dress as one wanted started after COVID-19. I found this interesting. What do you think about it? One other thing you will observe on the streets of Santome is the vast number of unhealthy stray dogs that are lying about. Despite the fact I saw so many of the dogs, I could not recall seeing any healthy one. I can as well recall seeing several dogs on some of the islands in Cape Verde. I still don't understand why Portuguese colonized countries like lots of dogs. Now, in the south and the north of this island, however, you will see more of pigs everywhere. In fact, at a point during my trip, I was considering declaring pigs the national animal of the Santome Island. There is no way I can visit the place without having a taste of the local dishes. Santome has a lot of delicacies of which I was able to eat rice, cassava and plantain. Every meal is accompanied with a fish. The fish in Santome remains one of the best I've tasted anywhere. There are lots of nice fruits here like the mangoes, the jackfruits and coconut and several others. But I ate these particular ones I mentioned. Let's get onto the language of this island. The Portuguese spoken here is the European Portuguese as compared 
to the Brazilian Portuguese variant. There are some other local languages here that are spoken like the Angolares, the Creoles, which combine Portuguese and local languages. Some people even speak more French than they speak English. So you can also speak to French or any of these local languages if you can't communicate in Portuguese. If you listen carefully, some of the people here make the R and L mistake when they pronounce some words. Just like some people in Kigali and Anambra will sometimes wrongly pronounce words like tomorrow as tomorrow. Another thing you notice in the country is the way Santome is pronounced. Portuguese speakers will say sound, which is very nasal. While other language speakers will say sao, but is actually pronounced san like S-A-N. So bear that in mind when pronouncing the name of this country. In this video, I pronounced it the way the locals pronounce it, which is Santome. Let us go out and visit a few places. The first place I visited was the former Fort San Sebastian or the Fort of St. Sebastian, which was built in 1566 but has today become San Tome Museum. Unfortunately, this museum was under lock when I got there because of renovation was going on on it. From this museum, I visited the city center which has some important places like churches, the presidential palace, the independence square and so many other squares. There's also a port, a central market, the vice president's office, some embassies and several other places here. After this visit to the city center, I visited the airport. The main attraction at the airport are the two Biafran planes that were abandoned at this airport. And these planes were used to supply relief materials to Biafra during the Biafran war. According to history, these planes were donated by a non-governmental organization known as Kane Relief in order to help supply food and relief materials to Biafrans. After the war, however, they could not be sold like other planes that were used to supply the relief materials and they were abandoned here to rot. In 2000, a San Tome entrepreneur converted these two planes into a restaurant and he more recently started living in one of the planes. The next place I planned visiting on this trip is Porto Alegre, which is the south of the island. On my way out of the airport, I negotiated with this motorbike to take me to the south of the island for 400 dobra, which is almost $20. A normal trip from the central park would cost around 100 dobra for a single trip in a shared public taxi. But this will of course will not stop at some places of interest for you to take pictures. At first, this idea of going with a motorbike looked like a good idea but soon I found out it was a very suicidal one. Traveling to Porto Alegre from San Tome on a motorbike was one of the biggest mistakes I had ever made in a very long time. The route is very mountainous, slippery and rough. He trained for more than one hour on this three and a half hour trip. I could not even take pictures of most of the places I had planned to. I even thought of calling off the trip at some point and going back to San Tome, but I had already paid the motorbike who used the money to buy petrol for this trip. Embarking on this trip was not also a good idea for the motorbike guy. A police officer stopped him somewhere around Angolaris and charged him 400 dobra for not having his ID and driving with outside mirrors. In essence, he lost all the money I paid him for this trip. Poor guy. This incident also revealed to me that police corruption exists not just in Nigeria or in West Africa but in almost everywhere. So let me share some of the things that happened on our way to Porto Alegre. We drove a few minutes to arrive at the Aguaize, which is where the famous Rosa Aguaize Hospital is located. We stopped at both the new Aguaize Hospital before moving to the older abandoned one, which was a top-notch hospital in 1928. Even though it was the best hospital in West Africa at the time, it's now left in ruins. A heavy rain started when we got to a place called Boca de Frame. Unfortunately, because of this rain, we could not stop at so many other places to take pictures. Even when we passed the Pico Cão Grand, I could only get a glimpse of what it is, but could not take pictures because of the rain and the thick clouds covering the mountain. I was able to get some good pictures on my way back. Another important place for me was the flourishing palm groves of Agri Palma in Riberia Pesh. This is the industrial oil palm plantation in the Republic of San Tome and Principe with over 2,100 hectares of land. It employs 800 people directly and indirectly and has turned in more than 5,000 tons of palm oil. Porto Alegre was the final destination on this trip. Despite how impoverished this place looks, things are very expensive due to the fact that tourists visit here often. We got here around 4 o'clock in the evening. The most important place tourists visit here is Strollers Island, which is a 20 minute boat ride from here. We had arrived here late in the evening and the boat guys insisted on taking 
400 dobra to ferry me across to the Rollers Island. This amount was something I was too unwilling to pay. They claimed I was the only one that would be ferried across and hence the reason they charged me this much. They agreed they could have charged me less if I had come in earlier to go with other tourists. Well, I decided to rather tour Porto Alegre and then watch the Rollers Island from a distance. I justify my action by predicting in my rain in the boats and that if I visit, it will be too late for me to return to Santome. So right behind me now is the Rollers Island and like I said earlier, it is popular because the equator line passes through it. Even though we spent around 20 minutes here before leaving back to Santomi, this place is very very underdeveloped and from my experience, it's one of the most expensive places in Santomi, probably because the fact that tourists visit here often. Fortunately, it did not rain on our way back and we arrived home safely around 8 o'clock in the evening. Let me say it again. This trip to Porto Alegre on a motorbike is one of the most difficult trips I've ever embarked on. And if you want to visit, I'll advise you to either rent a vehicle or join public transport from the Central Park. So on the last day of my trip, my Airbnb host informed me that the place where children from Biafra were camped during the Biafran War in Quinta San Antonio was just a stone throw from where, where her house is located. She took me to see the place. Okay. Okay. Nigeria? Sim. Ok. Oh. Nigeria? Ok, ok, ok. Ok, sim, sim. Todo lugar é de já transformada. Ok, 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 ok. Ok, ok, ok. Ok, ok. Ok. Para além disso também, para além dessas casas, tinham para onde? Para 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 além dessas casas, ok. Tinham montadas tendas. Oh. Ok. After here in Quinta Santa Antonio, I visited Neves, which is the north of the island. You will observe the peaceful ocean and vehicles struggling on these narrow paths. The countryside is something interesting to behold. You will also notice all sorts of flowers, plants that are used to fence compounds. There are not too many things to see here, but however, there is a very famous brewery in Rosema, which happens to be the only brewery here in Santome. So this is where my exploration of the island ended and I had promised to share how I was able to survive not traveling with cash and inability to withdraw cash using my debit card. What I did was to find Nigerians who do business in Santome. Most places where Nigerians do business here in Africa, they always have people who are willing to receive cash transfers to their Nigerian bank accounts and then they will give you the local currency of the country you are in. This type of transfer has always worked for me in most of the African countries I've visited. What do you think about Santome? Would you want to visit? Thank you very much for watching and I'll be waiting to hear what you think about this video. Please subscribe if you like this content. And don't forget, keep traveling.